popcorn. Yes. <laughs> no butter, yeah. please. Quickly before we start. Do we get buttered popcorn? It's too early in the morning. Yeah, you're right. Well, not on the East Coast. Coffee. Coffee. Uh, Who's drinking coffee? Let's all show what we're drinking. There. All right. Kabucha, water, and Julie, some... what's in there? This is matcha. Ooh. Ooh, I can see it. Yeah. It's green inside, yes? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready. You guys ready? Oh yeah, well, it's 1201. Is everyone ready? I'm ready. Are people, are attendees ready? Hi, welcome back to Navigating the Unknown and Happy New Year. I want to scream that. I'm Andrea Stern of Stern Rep and Ask Stern Rep. And in these webinars, we cover a lot of pressing topics that shape the business for photographers. Today may be one of the largest topics we, we all have to constantly figure out. Thank you, APA LA, for making this webinar continue to happen. Today, we are so excited to bring back our guest from episode 12 that we did on websites. We had so much to talk about that we needed to take a part two on this topic of marketing. So that's what we have today. And this week we have our co-host. I should take that out, Hugh, because it's not this week. Every week, Hugh Kretschmer is my co-host. And Hugh is an LA photographer, APA LA board member. And we have consultants, Amy V. Cooper and Julie Skarwecki to continue this conversation. So I'll turn to Hugh first. Oh, great. Uh, Andrea and Emma, our esteemed guests, thank you for coming. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I really appreciate it. I've been a board member for about three years. Um, APA is about advocacy. It's about community. Uh, we're here to support you, and we hope you, that you join. Um, uh, we're big fans of Ask Stern Rep, and we so appreciate you coming in and doing this for us because we I think everyone benefits from it, and I certainly do. So thanks for letting me be a co-host, and uh, back to you. Back to me. All right, welcome everybody. I'm gonna introduce you two. Uh, we have Amy V. Cooper, and you are one of the top photography consultants in the US with over 20 years of experiencing working as a professional photographer. Really? Really? Yeah photo editor, ad agency, art buyer, and photography agent. Ooh. She has the unique experience of having been on every possible side of the camera with a variety of clients, including UPS, Microsoft, Mary Kay, Coca-Cola, Netflix, Teen Vogue, Esquire, and many more brands. Wow. Woo. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. I'm so I really am, but we'll get into that. <laughs> Julie Skarwecki is a consultant specializing in helping artists define their personal brands, strengthen their portfolios, connect with photo editors and art buyers and art producers, and success successfully target their ideal clients using strategic marketing and promotional tactics. She has over 10 years of experience in the photography industry, including being a photography agent and consultant which you are now. She has worked with photographers and illustrators with client lists that include Amazon, Facebook, Coca-Cola, Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, Instagram, Gatorade, Whole Foods, Target. I'm gonna keep going, but I'll stop there. <laughs> so hi to both of you. Hi. 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 <laughs> we can just stop there. Hi. Attendees, I, I wanna say this to you. We have a major part of this, um, the huge, the best, biggest part of this webinar is your questions. We have already a lot of your questions in so far, but we want more. And if we can get to them, and if the topics you ask weren't already covered, we will hopefully get them. But please, um, we ask, please put them in the Q and A area and not the chat area. Okay, thank you. And remember to join Hugh and I at the end of this discussion because we like to stay on and have our own short wrap chat, that's what we call it, to share our thoughts about each episode. So it's fun, so stay, stay with us. The general plan for today is uh, with so much to cover, but the overall puzzle of marketing is where I wanna start. And then emails and promos, social media, 
keeping your database and then choosing your paid resources networking options. Biggie. And then the COVID changes affecting our marketing strategies. We want to get into that. And then at, at the end, we have a quick yes and no speed round. I want to say speed dating. Uh, <laughs> speed <laughs> round of questions for the four of us. So hi, Amy and Julie. <laughs> what I want hi. to do is define marketing. Because honestly, I do this 100% of the time. And it's hard for me to even see it clearly and get words on it separate from what I'm doing all the time. So I'd love your feedback. Like, what is marketing? Can you define it for us? Either for one. Me, I would say marketing is building relationships and building trust. And I think if photographers can understand that and not see it as sales, hopefully that will allow them to exhale a little bit and get more comfortable with it. Wow. <clears throat> Great answer. Julia, yeah. what do you think? Marketing and sales is different, you're right. I mean, I think that people do kind of get hung up in their mind that they like don't want to sound salesy, but that's not really what marketing is. Um, I like to tell people that that marketing is basically just giving the person who wants a product or service the information that they need to purchase that product or service. So you're just matching what you can provide with the person who needs that. And so that's kind of what you're doing with marketing is finding ways to get your work or your service or your product in front of the right people instead of, you know, just kind of floating along. I just saw my internet is unstable. So if you guys got to jump in for me. It sounds good to me. Okay. Good, yeah. Okay. Shoot. Phew, that's so, oh, so rude. That was great. <laughs> Hugh, Hugh, do you define it the same way, marketing? I, love, I think I, uh, you know, it is about relationships. It's not about sales. That's what I've, that has been proven to me to be the most effective way of marketing and has garnered me more work by making it personal um, and it's about relationship building. You know, they talk about low lying fruit and that's what I normally go for. Um, I'll put, I'll spread it out over to other people, but I'll really focus on building those relationships and, it's, and because, you know, that's, that's more work. So well, that's what works for me. It's interesting. Yeah. I do think I have the rep view on this, which is have something to say or show and stay in front of people, be in front of people, be in front of people, because you never know timing wise, get yourself out there. To mm -hmm. me, that's the main part of it. So let's, let's break this out a little bit. When you first take on a client, tell me, what do you first look for in terms of their marketing? How do you help them set up their plan and steps for them? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I yeah, know at least when people come to me, I would say it, not everyone, but the majority of people are coming to a consultant um, because they've sort of reached a plateau in their career. There's something that's not working anymore. They're trying to get to that next level or they have higher level clients coming in and they're not quite sure how to handle them. So it's usually, there's a reason that they're reaching out in the first place. And so my first question uh, almost always is what are you doing for your own marketing? And I would say nine times out of 10, it's like, well, nothing, which isn't really true because you have a website, you have social media, you are doing something. Um, it, that question really just kind of tells me how intentional are you being in your marketing? Are you seeking people out? Are you being proactive or are you waiting for people to come to you? You know, are you strategic in what you're doing or are you just kind of like posting images every now and then you kind of have this website that you're updating and then you're just like going with the flow. Um, and that really just tells me how much control someone is taking over their own business right now. Right. I would have to agree with Julie. I would say probably nine out of 10 of my clients don't have a marketing strategy. So getting them set up starts with, first of all, understanding who you're marketing to. Do you have a really clearly defined market? Do you know who you're speaking to? Do you know what they want to hear? And from there, make sure you have a client list. So that's the next step. Make sure you have a spreadsheet of all your clients with their contact information or some kind of CRM where you can make notes of the interactions that you have with those people. 
once you have that list, then you have to think about your, the, how much time you have and what your budget is. If you, are, if you have a very small budget and you're also homeschooling two kids simultaneously, you may only have time to market to 10 or 20 people. Um, if you have more time, more money, maybe you can hire help. Maybe you do a lot more marketing. And I think it's important for photographers to know that you don't have to be on the same marketing plan as anyone else. Make it work for you and really start to listen to yourself and understand which types of marketing feel good for you. So if Instagram marketing doesn't feel good for you, don't focus on that, do something else. Um, and then really, I think you'll hear Julie and I say over and over as well as Andrea, consistency is probably the most important thing showing up over and over. So you're in their field of vision um, and they're recognizing your name because when they recognize your name, eventually they start to trust you. And that's when the opportunities will start opening up for mm -hmm. jobs. It can, it, this whole topic, it's so daunting, I think for everyone, because there's so much possibility. Like maybe I market, do it one way. You guys do it another way. Hugh, you probably another way. Your rep probably does another way. How can we get all the pieces of the puzzle to help people see the overall, these are the steps. And I know what you just said are some <laughs> of the steps, but how, how do we help people manage them? Like, where do they start? Is there a starting place? Mm. I think um, to kind of just stress a little bit what Amy was saying, um, it, consistency really is important. And, and I think that what, when some people think of marketing, they don't, they're not necessarily looking at the big picture. And so what you really need to understand is that your intention with marketing isn't to send out one email newsletter and then get all of the jobs rolling in, right? That's not really going to happen. Sometimes you'll have luck, but that's not your goal. Your goal is to become top of mind to people so that when they have the job that you are well suited for, they think of you. And the way to do that is to be consistent and to be in front of them. So you do want to be present on multiple channels, but you don't have to do everything. You know, like Amy said, you don't have to be super, super into Instagram and every other, you know, marketing channel as well. You can have something that you're sort of more inclined to, to do consistently. Um, and in that way, I think it's sort of like, it's sort of like exercise. Like it's not really helpful if you're not doing it consistently. So whatever it is that resonates with you, you know, if you're saying like email newsletters are the, the death of you, then like, don't do it. Let's just focus on something else first. But I think identifying that ideal client um, is the first step a lot of the time. So who are your ideal clients? Who do you want to be shooting for? Who are you well suited for? And then sort of breaking that down. How are you going to get your work in front of them on a consistent basis for the next rest of your career, basically? You know, what's what's sustainable for you? It's not going to be emailing every single day. You know, you have to have a, it's something that's sustainable that makes sense. Well, when you say sustainable, what, what do you mean? Um, I guess I just mean that... Um, like you don't really need to have, you don't need to update your website every day. You don't need to post three times a day on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and also sending out these direct emails and also doing the newsletters. You need to have a, a schedule that makes sense to you. So, you know, a newsletter can go out once a quarter, a printed so really promo. really break it out. Break it out. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people get overwhelmed because they're like, oh, I have to do all of these different things, but you don't actually, you just need to be consistent and you need to be targeting the right people, you know, because it's better to be consistent with 50 potential clients than, you know, incorrectly targeting 2000 clients that that right. doesn't really make sense for you. So, you know, you don't want to be spinning your wheels. You want to be efficient in how you're using your time. You did you have a question? Well, so would you recommend, you know, laying out a calendar as part of that starting point too. I mean, yeah. because, you know, with two kids, it can be unrealistic to, you know. And then the other question that I have is, when you talk about consistent, you know, what, what does that mean? Um, you know, because yes, you want them to be, you want to be top of mind, but you don't want to, you know, uh, barrage them and make yourself right. a, so, what yeah. I'm going to ask this to you guys, what do you think is consistent to be respectful to your client, your potential client and be top of mind? Yeah, you want to be, um, it's sort of like a pleasant pest almost, you know, you don't want to like, 
barrage people with emails, but that's why I say like an email newsletter, you can send that once a quarter. You don't have to really do that once a month. Um, some people have more success with that if they're not, you know, using other channels, but you don't have to post a, a, you know, a photo every single day on Instagram. It's just not necessary. So I think having a calendar, um, especially taking advantage of, you know, seasons, um, just the, you know, kind of the changes throughout the year. When are you going to send that email newsletter? It probably shouldn't be the same time if not now, we're not now sending print newsletters or print promos, but you probably don't want to send that at the same time, right? You can space right. that out a little bit. Out. So that, yeah. So that you're still top of mind for people, but you're, you're spacing it out in a way that makes sense. Um, and to go just with Instagram, being consistent is important, but part of why I think people shouldn't post every day is because you don't have an endless supply of content, you know, mm -hmm. you're sharing work that you've created. So if you're going to be able to keep up with that, then by all means post once a day, but if you can't, you're going to run out in a few months. And then what are you going to do halfway through the year? But there's also the difference into stories and the feed, which we will get to. Yeah. yeah. I would love to just chime in on the, the calendar thing. So I think probably what would be really helpful for photographers is to make sure that they have time set aside a meeting with themselves regularly where they just have that time to focus on their marketing. So I recommend that photographers decide, okay, maybe the first Monday of the month from 10 a.m. to 12 is going to be the time that I block the rest of my tasks, my marketing tasks for the month. And I actually have a 12 month marketing calendar that photographers can get from my website. And I have the tasks broken out by quarter as well as by month. So there you have a list of all the possible things that you could do. So when you make that time for yourself, you can go to that list and say, okay, these are the tasks that I wanna work on this week. And here's the time that I have to do it or the content. And I think you know, blocking that time is really important. And also I just wanna reiterate that um, you know, to what Julie was saying about sustainability, you don't have to do all of the tasks that are on that list. You know, if it depends on, again, how much time you have to work on your marketing, choose the tasks that are feasible for you that week um, or make a decision in advance. Okay, I'm gonna show up on Instagram consistently or I'm gonna show up on LinkedIn consistently or I'm gonna email consistently. Pick a couple of things that you know you can do consistently and block the time on your calendar to do those. Is there a way for a photographer to pinpoint what are what are the things I'm I could I need to do better at? Like which I'm okay here and here. How do they know which which one they must raise and and do more of? Well your engagement will answer that question for you. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a big topic. It's like, oh boy. A lot of people just don't bother to check their analytics. You know, pay attention to the engagement in the analytics. Yeah, right. It tells you a lot for your website and well, your social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So the basic message of marketing, it, it comes, it's so, I don't know. I don't want to get off tangent, so I won't. What What are the biggest reasons that people don't see success in marketing? Is there any? And I ask that because I think we have to stay cutting edge. Our clients, we're in advertising, most of us, or just as a photographer, you have to stay up on top of the new trends and what's going on. You have to lead the way. Mm -hmm. So what are the ways people are not doing their best, how can they do better to stay at the lead of this? Like, I really think it's, it's so much about consistency. I have so many clients who, you know, sent out that first newsletter blast and didn't hear back. And then they just gave up after that first one, you have to do it again and again and again, 20 mm -hmm. times, do it until someone tells you to stop doing it before <laughs> you ever give up. <laughs> um, that's uh, so good. <laughs> I'm not familiar with Jack Canfield, and, and he talks about in his books. He talks about these statistics. It's about numbers. He said, um, <clears throat> "Don't expect anything until you know. Don't don't expect anything. Period. But 
you know, it takes four times at least to get them to like, oh, recognize your name a little bit. And we're yeah. starting there. Um, mm -hmm. One of the questions that came in was, you know, do I drop, if someone has not responded, do I drop them? And I say, no, just keep at it, keep them, you know, and, but don't go in there with expectations. Like you're gonna walk away with a job. You yeah. know, one of our, one of our past episodes was with two art producers and once told us, Sandra, she told us they keep the words from our email promos. So they do a search from an email promo like lifestyle or food. So they don't respond, but we're in their system, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when I was an art buyer, I had folders in my email by city or by genre of photographers. And I may not have ever written them back, but they were in my folders to go to when an opportunity came up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think a lot of people kind of get in their head a little bit about about not hearing back. But, you know, imagine all of the emails that you get that you don't respond to, you know, what we're all saying, like, just because someone isn't directly responding to you doesn't mean that they aren't, they aren't keeping that or it's not logged away somewhere for future reference. Um, and Amy, like you said, until someone tells you to stop, so until they unsubscribe, you can keep emailing them like that. It, you know, if someone opens it and they don't unsubscribe, that's sort of them accepting what you've sent um, you know, and acknowledging it in a way. So you really don't have to rely on that direct feedback to, to feel comfortable with that, like that level of marketing with emails. Um, also, it, you know, it, at least in the photo industry, people don't just like have jobs that they're just like giving out whenever you email them, you know, you're, you're <laughs> connecting with someone, but if they don't have the job for you right then, they can't just make one up to give to you. So that's why it is so important to become top of mind so that when something comes up and they're like, oh, right, this guy, I follow him on Instagram. He's been posting a lot. I've got these emails from him. I have visited his website a few times. He's perfect for this. I'm going to reach out to that guy um, instead of the person who sent one email two years ago and then never followed up, you know, right. um, that's not who they're going to remember. But there is something so important to me about being a little more cutting edge and fresh. Like how do we keep our marketing fresh? Like we have to keep updating our website every, mm -hmm. every what, what do you think? Year? Uh, well, I think, or I feel like it should be updated like once a month lightly. I don't mean this. this. Oh yeah. Like an overhaul, I think yeah. once a year. Yeah. I think one thing that I like just through the years have noticed with people is that really strong branding in their market, like in their business and in their marketing, yeah. a lot of the time, even for me, like I'm, I'm very susceptible to it. I'm like, Oh, I recognize that logo mm -hmm. or that font that they're using, or just the layout of that website. There's something that's sticking in my mind and it's not always the, the photography, you know, it's, that, that's part of just building a business and building that's a brand so for your true, that branding. And I do it like with digital assets for our, mm -hmm. for our Instagram stories. Like we have to keep, keep adding okay. some new branding, exactly what you're talking about. And even mm -hmm. for all, for all social media, for those blacks, backsplashes, we update them. Mm -hmm. We have to, like you have to keep, keep fresh. Yeah. That, that's what our clients need. It is. And also making sure that those branding elements and, you know, whatever you've chosen for your, the, the marketing channel that you want to lean into the most, um, making sure that that resonates with your clients. You know, if you're, if you're going for like, you know, interiors and your, you know, interiors is very structured. There's a lot of straight lines, like everything about it has to be very clean, but oh, everything it. else. Huh? Match, match it. Match Mm -hmm. Yeah, if your imagery is bright and colorful and fun and exciting, but your branding is kind of drab and you'd like phoned in that logo that you made on Squarespace, clients are going to recognize that, that there's something there that's not matching up. Yeah, um, it feels like yeah, yeah. So you think about <laughs> you're pitching your work to people who create the world's most exciting marketing materials. Right. So mm -hmm look at what the brands you want to work for are doing. Look how they are innovating their marketing and be inspired by that and let that be kind of a, a guiding area for you and your marketing innovation. Yeah. Um, get on the level. 
<clears throat> we got also, a lot of questions. I also think that the branding should not overshadow the work. I've seen portfolios <laughs> that like, wow, this, you know, the, you have to push a certain lever and it pops open or whatever it may be, but then you see the work and it's just like, mm. you know, so yeah. I think it's yeah. a fine line. That's it's, a good uh, point. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm like, yeah, that is a good point. <laughs> Um, we have a question. What kind of work can I include in my marketing? Am I allowed to share tests and personal projects? Oh, yeah, you're encouraged, encouraged to include, I would say. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, everything your well, your clients also know, you know, anyone who, you know, is like an art producer, or a photo editor, they know that not all the images in your book were shot for a client. They know that there's test work in there and there are personal projects mixed in. Um, but you're really guiding, like that's part of marketing that I think is so important is that that's you taking control over who, which clients you're attracting, who you're working with, how you're defining yourself as a brand and as a photographer. So, you know, if you find that you're not getting the type of work that you want, you've been doing all these personal projects or test shoots, you want to be marketing that work so that you can attract the clients that you want. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, the personal work, sometimes, you know, I get, I'm so excited about showing this work that that comes out in the in the email too you know mm -hmm. so in fact i was thinking my next portfolio review of just putting my personal work up front because i'm because that's what i want to lead with you know and then get mm -hmm. to the jobs in the back end of the portfolio so so many questions on that on emails so hugh how do you how do you email someone a cold email what do you do well the uh, the first thing that I do is I try to make my emails as personal as possible. So, um, and what I mean by that is I, I target clients. I don't, you know, I do a, um, a, a blast, let's say, um, usually it's around every other month or every three months, but on a regular basis during, uh, during the week, I'll send personal emails to clients that have made, have clicked on my e-blast or whatnot. And I just show work. I just so show, this is what I'm working on. This is how I did it. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. I do not include, you know, hope we can work together. I, you know, um, you know, it, keep me in mind. None of that. They know why I am approaching them. Um, the other thing I do is I try to find some information about that person. Maybe there's a project that they worked on, um, do a little research, something, a, a, a touch point to, to talk about initially, but just keep it really brief. And what happens is I get emails back from them because mm -hmm. they're not guarded. I know when I'm being sold something from let's say an assistant or a retouching house, there's like a wall that comes up, an invisible wall that, that keeps me from engaging with them. But when that wall is removed by not saying, hope we can work together, I get emails back. Yeah, that's say, how do we all stay away from Great. sales pitch? Like, don't you guys agree that's the worst? Don't sound like a sales pitch. Yeah, mm -hmm. make it about them and their business. Tell them why you're passionate about them. Tell them why you think that you your work would connect with their audience, how you could improve their business or their sales or whatever it is, make it more about them than, hey, look at me, hire me, I did this, me, me, me. Um, yeah. That doesn't feel good. Yeah. And they also, you know, you're right, they, they do know, you know, it's not a mystery why you're emailing. You don't have to be yeah. redundant. Uh, here's a question that I think is, is pointed. Can we be creative with email list subject lines as long as it's not cheesy or should they be straightforward? Mm. I've I seen both. And actually an art producer once said to me, say, hi, Andrea. Yeah. Like, their name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I think some people say don't have new work in your headline, but as uh, coming from an art buyer who loves to see photography, who loves to look at images, I don't mind seeing new work or photos of, yeah. um, that's what mm -hmm. I like to look at. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I do. What I do is I put my name first and then new work, um, in the subject line. Mm -hmm. I, I also like when it does say new work to tell me 
like give me a taste of who that client is, you know, say like new work by from Adidas um, oh. and updates or something, you know, kind of call that out a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit more attention grabbing if people do see a recognizable name. Yeah, that kind of leads that they, it's an excitement. It's like, oh, what are they doing? What's yeah, especially if, if they are an art buyer who, you know, works in, yeah. uh, you know, fitness or sports, they're going to see that and be a little bit more inclined to open that email. I would like to just comment really quickly back on the topic of test shoots. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to call out in your, in your email or in your marketing that it was a test shoot. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. Definitely include it if it's strong work. Mm -hmm. Very good point. And even, but what do you guys, this is such off topic, but personal <laughs> section on website. We, I know we talked about this last time. That's important. Like people want to know your personal work. Mm -hmm. So in a way it's not a bad thing. It's a test. Mm -hmm. They want to see and maybe want to know what it, what was it like to test that? what did you learn? How did you do it? Well, mm -hmm. I think there's a difference between showing a personal project and showing a test shoot that was meant to build up, build up your commercial portfolio. Those are two different things, but I think they're both fantastic things to show. Yeah. I see people are talking about cold calls. Do you, do you guys, <laughs> it's so rude to call me. Um, uh, it used to be, it used to be able to do that. Like yeah. I would go to New York and I would say, I'm just in town. Do you have time? And they would actually pick up the phone. No yeah. Back then. Now there's when was too, that, many, yeah. too many photographers calling art buyers. It used to be fine, but now it's just overwhelming. No. And we need their cell phones really. Yeah. Well, here's a good question. If you guys don't mind. How would you go about making your email list? What if you're starting from scratch? Um, how do you get these email lists basically? Is what- um, I can answer that. Yoda list. Yoda list, uh -huh. agency access. And there's also LinkedIn. Yeah, Julie. Sorry, um, I was jumping the gun a little bit. Um, my understanding at least from speaking to a few lawyers is that we all need to get more comfortable with asking people to opt in to email newsletters. If you're sending out a blast, if you're sending out one email, it's fine. But um, right now we have access to these databases like Yoda list agency access, where you can just download a list LinkedIn. You can go in and you can find someone's email or their website, but you should be getting more comfortable with asking people to opt in because it seems like legally that's kind of the direction that we're moving in. Um, that'll be similar to the, you know, to Europe, how they handle like mass emails. Um, so I've been encouraging people now, I mean, all, to use all of those resources, but also to use social media if you can, you know, if you're planning out your email newsletter next week, put on there that you're about to send it out, ask people to subscribe if they want. Um, and then at least you'll have those and you'll know that those people did opt in. You can then take some of your contacts from social media and take them into your email newsletter world, which you might not have contact information for all of the potential clients that are following you on social media. So then you're kind of, you're transferring those contacts over. So I would definitely encourage everyone to kind of start thinking of ways that you can get people to opt in now. Mm -hmm. That's great. I, I do think we did get a question on niche or mass emails, Both. or not just emails, but database lists. Do you want niche or, mm -hmm. and I do think niche is more important yes. Yes. for mm -hmm. photographers where I tend to do both, but I do a lot of mass, but as a rep, I think that's appropriate, but for photographers niche. And don't you guys agree? Like, oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll send out an e-blast, but I'll do yeah. these personal emails. I'll do five a day, you know, and it's cut and paste too. So yeah, if you do a mass mailing to 800 people, the, the possibility of a lot more people unsubscribing is higher than if you are really focusing on people who you know yes. would want to, to look at your type of photography. Um, mm -hmm. and that's better for your domain in general. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah, I would think both. Uh, I think, uh, it just to Hugh's point, um, I always advise people to set a limit. Um, maybe say you're sending five, you know, five or 10 personalized emails a week, and those are going to go to a really niche audience. That's going to be the people that you've done the research for to see what campaigns they've worked on, you know, who their clients are. 
you're going to send them something that's tailored just to them. It is copy and paste, but, but you're adjusting it so that it, you know, it, it targets that specific person that's serving a different function though, than the, the mass newsletter, the newsletter is to create a, you know, a world where you're becoming top of mind. Those, those specific emails are about relationship building. And that's just a little bit different. You're starting a relationship with that individual person um, and then you're going to consistently check back in with them, keep them updated on work. You're, you're trying to build a relationship in a, just a slightly different way. Yeah. Maybe we're understanding that question a little bit differently. I think I so. do <laughs> think, yeah. I do think you should start with a very personal direct email, introducing yourself to someone first and then add mm -hmm. them or ask them if you can add them to your newsletter, which goes out to everyone, which is yeah. not as personalized. And those newsletters mm -hmm. can be you know, quarterly or every two months. That's, we got a question from Megan and it was about cold call emails. How do we do it? What is the best way to reach out to new contacts without simply saying, hello, someone sent me to you. I want to engage them a little more than a quick hello, but without knowing much about them, do I just send them my website? A one mm -hmm. paper, a one page with a few images that represent my work. How do I get them to open my email? I know some agencies have filters that their email systems could send my email to spam if I'm not in their contact list. Is there something I can do with a subject line to help prevent this? So kind of all the questions, what do they say? It's hard. I yeah, feel like for me, it comes very naturally. I'm just kind of talking. <laughs> yeah, I think like we said before, just start out introducing yourself. Hey, I'm such and such photographer in this location. I really like your brand because here's a link to my work or I don't know how we're feeling about attaching PDFs. That's been effective in the past. I don't know how it's working for everyone now, but also it's just going to happen. Some people are not going to get your email. Some people aren't. Um, yeah. I don't know. Julie, do you have tricks? Got some tricks. Um, I don't know if I have tricks for getting around this spam filter that your specific company might have in place. I think, I mean, that's there for a reason. Um, you know, it, it, there's not a whole lot. I don't think that we can really do for that, but I it, just kind of what you were saying, Amy, I think introduce yourself, always give your location. Um, tell me what your specialty is. So, you know, I'm John, I'm a New York photographer. I specialize in food and lifestyle. You know, lately I've been shooting for clients X, Y, and Z. I really like the work that's been coming out of this agency, specifically this campaign that I saw. And I yeah. think that together we could create some really great content. Here's a look at some work that I've, that I've done. And then I would, I like the PDF. I think it's great. I would attach the PDF of relevant work, including your signature you know, your contact information, your website, and then they can follow up with you that way. I do think I, there's one way not to get to spam and it's not to include images. If you're just yeah. talking. Well, we, yeah. can we talk a little bit about that? Cause Amy, you talked about the PDF idea and that mm -hmm. was broached to me that a PDF has a much easier time getting through some of these um, filters and, uh, mm -hmm. and firewalls. Is that true? Like, I, I don't know if it's true, but I think it's rude because we don't want to, we're told if we don't know the person. I know, we're like, wait. <laughs> oh, it's rude from them. I got it. No, yeah. no, no, it's so rude of us to it's send a PDF that. because if they don't know us, there's so much, so much we can't click links if you don't know somebody, don't open a PDF. Mm. Like if you know the person, Okay, but I always ask first, can I send you an ED PDF? And it's actually a way to engage and have a conversation. I wouldn't just send a PDF unless I know them very well. Oh, are we just talking about an image that's a PDF? No, or? I was talking about a whole collection of- Oh, images. no, I was just talking about- Oh, one, pay, one promo. so sensitive that they, they target JPEGs and then they put that, if, if, if an email has a JPEG, that goes into the spam. Mm. What I'm saying is that you you camouflage it by making that image a PDF and sending that along mm -hmm. is what I was talking I've about. I think, I think we need a webinar with some IT guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Ooh. But I just want to reiterate the contact information. I actually love to see it at the top. So maybe your name and your logo, um, fashion photographer in New York City, contact information right at the top, and maybe even again in the footer. So 
I love that. And I love, Andrea, what you were saying about these art buyers searching by keywords within their email system. Yeah. Be a great thing to do. Um, maybe not in a one-on-one -on -one email, maybe so, but it's definitely something you can do when you're creating a newsletter within something like MailChimp or Emma. Yeah. So you, are you saying like put in lifestyle in your subject so that, you know. No, in, at, just at the top of the email. Got it. Okay. Hugh, Good. I see we have a lot of questions and I know I, we are so not getting to everything today, <laughs> but any th questions that we need to, I don't want to ignore people or. No, I'm, um, I'm keeping that pretty. In okay. So as they come in, so okay. let's move on. What do you get I have that? a question from Patricia here. Well, what's the best follow-up with open clicks after sending email promos? Any thoughts? And again, what was the question? Open opened emails and clicked emails. So if we can see who clicked on the email, what can we do with that? I think I, find another area to engage oh. with them. See if they have um, a public Instagram or maybe a connection on LinkedIn. I talked about this on my last Wednesday Wisdom and it was one of those things I don't think people know to do. But first of all, the clicks are showing a lot of feedback. So if you look at this list, who clicked? What companies? Oh, this type of company is interested. Oh, cruise ships are interested in me. Okay. It's so banks. Okay. You get such feedback that is very hard to get. And the other part, um, click lists. I knew I'd have a brain freeze when I was doing it. <laughs> Here you guys say, do you have an opinion? And I'll keep thinking. Um, I was just going to say with, um, in terms of responding to those people, I love what, what Amy said, look on, you know, look on LinkedIn, look on Instagram. Um, I would also though, if, if we're talking about someone that you've never communicated with before, like, let's say you just sent out a newsletter and you're seeing who clicked, I would wait like two weeks maybe, and then follow up with them, send them your, your introductory email and do the same thing that we discussed and say like, you know, I'm. Nick from Texas, you know, I specialize in this. I wanted to share this specific work with you or this spe specific project with you. Cause if you can see what they clicked on, yeah. then you can put together either a PDF or maybe just include some images in the email somehow that just speak directly to that client. Um, yeah, and then it becomes much more personalized. Be sure though, to keep track of what they clicked on. So you're not repeating yeah. the image. Okay. <laughs> The other thing I was going to think about is that whoever else works with that person, if you didn't send it to them, look up who else works at that company. If that person's interested mm -hmm. enough to click, and sometimes it's like three times, five times, mm -hmm. who else at that company doing what they do, an art director, creative director, art producer, do you need to add to your list? It's like a great saying, hello, add this company to your list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really smart. I well, love LinkedIn that. Is LinkedIn is a really good resource for investigating where these people are doing and where they're coming from. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. okay. Any other? I have a, do you guys have a favorite, a specific favorite way of marketing that stands out to you? Is there something you've seen and be like, wow, that's cool. I didn't think of that. Ooh, uh, yeah. Well, yes. So I love an email newsletter. I loved getting them. Like, I just think they're great. I think it's a really great way of showing me in a really succinct way, you know, what level you're at as a photographer, what campaigns you've been working on, who your clients are, you know, what your branding looks like, your, like your personality. I love those. But I also really love a really well-created printed promo. And I know that we're not really doing those right now. But that just like hits different. It's so, it like, it gives you so much information about the creative side of a photographer when you see like, even just the choice of paper, like the formatting, the project that they're sharing with you, you know, did they write a little note? What did they include? Like that to me was like, it's just getting like a little treat in the mail. And I think that that can resonate really strongly with people. Yeah, I, I, had, I think that goes with, you know, making it more personable, you know, mm -hmm. so when you, hit a smaller audience, but make it really precious, you know, and very mm. direct to them. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's really smart. A handwritten note. Yes, a handwritten yes. note. Yes, Especially I love handwritten. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Or like, I have how are you getting creative with your work? You know, like what are, 
Um, sorry, I know I just cut you off. I'm sorry. But um, like, you know, I know we said we don't want to get gimmicky with anything, you know, as Hugh was saying, we don't want to have to like pull strings and everything. But how are you taking maybe a personal project that you've invested a lot of time in and spinning it into something creative and interesting that stands out? You know, is it a set of note cards or is it a fold out newspaper or is it, you know, like a poster that you can move around? Is it a puzzle? Like, what are you doing that makes your work creative and interesting and showing me not just like who you are as a photographer, but as a person. Mm. I, I mean, I think you guys are absolutely right in everything you're saying, but I also want to add for me, I'll never forget. I brought someone a blended mocha once and she, it like made us friends. You know what? I spent $4, $5, $6. Yes. And it's weird. And then I got a, this, Photographer Patrick sent me a $25 gift card to a great vegan bakery. Mm. 25 bucks he spent, and he is on my mind a lot. Yes. <laughs> it's like weird stuff like that. That's Our so buyers cool. remember those, those special gifts. I, I talk about this all the time. This promo that I got several years ago when I was an art buyer from photographer NT St. Clair. She had just done this gorgeous lifestyle shoot for uh, a coffee place. And so her promo was this custom box that she had, had her logo printed on the top of the box. You open the box, you got a half a bag of coffee beans, a mug with her logo and her promo with all the gorgeous lifestyle images from that coffee shop. And I've always remembered that. And I have to say, like, shout out to Poppy Creative. She sent the cutest gift this year with um, the sage sticks to like burn away 2020 and with the matchbook. <laughs> it was so cute. In a cute little pouch. Yes. Yeah, super smart. Very yeah. smart. It sticks. And if, especially if it's around, I always thought if I can get it to be on their desk. Mm. Back in the days when we were at companies with desks. Yes. <laughs> something that could be just be in front of them. I tried notepads and I don't know. I recently, I have bamboo straws with my name on it when I was going to go in and do portfolio showings. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much is different with COVID and that's a, another topic and we have not that much time left. Uh, should we jump well, to another topic or should we, there's so much more to keep talking about with this. Well, we, there was one question. I think this is really poignant okay. right now is, you know, is there, is there a safe way that to send a, a mailed promo? Um, I don't think anybody's in the office. That's the thing. There is only yeah. one way you ask them, can I send this to you? Yeah. Can you put mm -hmm. your home address? Are you comfortable with that? Let yeah. them answer that. Yeah, that's a smart idea. And I see photographers doing that. They'll send a newsletter with, uh, you know, something they've shot and then, or maybe it's, the digital version of their promo. And then at the bottom, you know, may I send this to you? If so, click here to send me your email, your Very smart. email address. Yeah. That's really good. What's the difference? And I know the answer, but I'm asking is newsletter and promo. Are they different? I don't think they're you different. Mean a printed promo and a newsletter? No, email promo and an email newsletter. Oh, I think that's the same. That to me feels like the same thing. I have yeah. a different answer. I think a newsletter should be maybe four times a year. And it's about a catch up, a check in as far as I got this this year. I did this this year. Where an email promo was about one job, one type oh, of shoot, and more often, maybe every other month. So the newsletter would have more copy in it. Yeah. And the promo would not. That's my opinion. Um, and I want to make one other point about, you know, follow-up and consistency. One thing that's really worked for me is after a job, um, I will always write a thank you card to that person, a handwritten thank yes. you card. Of Brilliant. Gratitude. Um, and Same for after a portfolio review. Exactly. Yeah. I get, and I get thank you emails for the thank you card. <laughs> I love it. Wonderful. Very brilliant. We have a question. How to market with no work, new work to show? Well, you can create new work. Um, you can, you know, we said you can do test shoots, personal projects, 
Um, I think that, that that is a nice challenge for a lot of photographers because, you know, photography is your job, but clients also want to know what you are thinking about, what you're drawn to. And the ideal way to do that is to have that personal project or test work still be targeting your ideal client. So, you know, if you create really bright, poppy lifestyle work, you don't have anything to show, you still need to be marketing yourself. So go out and create some bright poppy lifestyle work that maybe follows a specific group of people or has a theme or, you know, you're creating- Around your house, just mm-hmm. more personal. Around your house, yeah. Yeah, maybe like make some project about your 10 kids who are all trying to do Zoom school right, right now. You know, <laughs> you have options. Like the world has a lot of options for you. Um, yeah. But yeah, I- just create- Sorry. Yeah, and that should be part of your marketing plan, shooting new yeah. content. That yeah. is, put that I, on. I think there's another answer too. You can take, you can make GIFs out of your, your, your existing images. You can make motion. You can do something new and fresh with what you have. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. smart. That yeah. is true, yeah. Yeah. We don't want to hear these excuses. Get out there with your camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, another thing that right now is also update your clients on your safety protocols that's that's another kind of content that you can share with them or ways that you've updated your uh studio so that you can communicate easier with them remote capability yes viewing very smart anything that are showing me those images you know if you're a product photographer create a, a you know a brief collection of images that shows me what you can create at home and then tell me, you know, this is what I can do here. I've got this much space. I made these images in my home studio, you know, then, then you're creating a conversation. You're starting a dialogue. Or even with a nimble crew, what did you create with a nimble crew? Now that we can only have two people there, what it, how did that work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And show it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, yeah. Here's a really interesting question. Uh, what about a short video to introduce or like a new or, you know, much like a newsletter? Mm. Uh, I'm concerned about that because the video, unless it's linked to a third party like YouTube or, or Vimeo, yeah. um, a video won't pass through that filter, but maybe there's a way to do that. Where... Is there a way to do it on Instagram? Maybe. Yeah. You like an IGTV? Yeah, and then leave it. I think it's a great idea if you can figure out a way how to get it to them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I love that. Work on that and get back to us. Yeah, <laughs> I'm curious. I love that because they that. say they say with Instagram marketing, you know, after you get a you know maybe a big jump in followers, it's great great to reintroduce yourself to your audience. Mm-hmm. That's I love true that. too. Yeah, showing right. old work too. Yeah, um, there are always reasons holidays or today is bagel day that's what we do a lot <laughs> to show old work yeah that's really smart um they do what is it flat or um flag day the thursdays or something Throw, where, throwback thursday, oh, thursday. Yes. Throwback we have a thursday. question how do you budget budget percentages for business costs slash marketing slash testing is there a like a, a formula formula mm. i mean I don't know if there's a formula, but I would say that, you know, you really don't have any excuse in terms of like just doing the marketing part. Test shoots are different, like creating the content that you're going to use to market to people. If you don't already have that, you know, you're going to, you're probably going to run into costs with a test shoot because you're going to want to have, you know, models and styling and, you know, you'll want that to be all dialed in. Um, But in terms of marketing, I mean, you can send out emails for next to nothing. You know, you, your Instagram is free. Your website yep. is basically free. You know, there's yep. really not an excuse with that. I think you really don't. I, I mean, to me, marketing costs shouldn't take up that much of your budget no. until you're talking about, yeah, doing test shoots. Um, mailing is different if we're talking about printing, yes. printing promos and then mailing costs. But right now, like, you know, we're kind of digital only and I don't know, I, I don't know what you would be doing that would cost that much. Well, testing, I guess, being part of the marketing plan, yeah. that can cost mm. money. Maybe that's where you spend the money if you need to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's also a lot of resources and networks that we, we're not going to get to today. Mm. <laughs> minutes left. I know, we're just talking about email marketing. I know. 
Jeez. <laughs> I, do, I have to share this. Yesterday, I asked an art producer, I said, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do this webinar. I want you to answer this. I said, what type of marketing works for you to know of photographers? Like what works? Mm. And she said, the best way to get your name out there is word of mouth. Yeah. So getting in with one art producer may help you around the country because they all talk to each other. Yes. She said she really misses printed por printed promos mm -hmm. and she would definitely open all of them. She mm -hmm. looks at rep sites and uses resources like Commune, Found, and Workbook. And Patty, maybe you can give the links to those, our wonderful Patty. Where am I here? She, she met photographers uh, at recent APA LA portfolio review. She loved it. She also heard the buzz from other reviewers. Portfolio reviews, even if they're on Zoom right now, I think they're one of the best. Um, and email promos go to her junk. So that was my idea of don't have an image maybe somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, she said, the hardest part is to know how, is to know what is, is how do I know of you if you don't, if I don't, if I don't follow you on Instagram, she said Instagram to her is the major way and networking events. And, and another art producer said she loves archive and communication arts. Those are two more resources contests. I used to, I used to feel like they were really good publicity. Very they good. Still are. It gives you something to say. They still are. Mm -hmm. I never paid attention to a single contest when I was an art buyer, but it can allow the photographer to email you and say, I just want to that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's well, I actually just did a 2021 report on all of the paid directories, like commune workbook found artist, and that's going to be published on Monday. So if anyone is thinking about paying for a directory, that report will be out on Monday on a photo editor's blog, and I'll put it up on my website as well. Right and I asked them how they all pivoted this year to support their photographers. And I also asked the photographers, which of these directories came through for you in 2020? I think it's really important to do that research before you pay for marketing. I think the most, the biggest part of that is, are they active on Insta stories? Because mm -hmm. my sense is that's how she and other art producers, that's how they, they like these companies. If they're active on Insta stories, if they're not, I don't know if they're worth a lot of money. But also, are they offering portfolio reviews? That's really important. Good one. Yeah, yeah. they that. Mm -hmm. Good one. Great. Okay. Wasn't that good? Uh, we're getting we're getting a lot done, you guys. I'm really. We are. <laughs> yeah, but wait, we're halfway through. <laughs> we're like the tip of the iceberg. Here. I know. But I think there's a there's a there's so nugget. Much. There's golden nuggets happening. We are. <laughs> I know we haven't even touched on social media marketing, really. Or COVID time. Yeah. And we have our rapid questions and we have really two minutes left. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going until I have to stop. When How do you find... Back. You yes, you guys are coming back. back. Morning. <laughs> Another question here. How do you find clients with bigger budgets that match your pricing? And how do you market to them? Hmm. I, so that actually... I, comes up for me a lot with clients. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just talking to someone yesterday about, about this intensely that a lot of the people, I'm sure Amy, you would agree that a lot of the people when they come to us, they're at a level where they, they, they need to level up. They're plateauing somewhere. A lot of the time, the problem that they're having is just that they're kind of stuck with these lower level clients. They're not really making a great day rate. You know, these people don't really know how photography works. They might be selling the copyright more often than they'd like to admit. Like there's a lot that's kind of going wrong on the client side for them. And the solution is just market to different people, you know, get different, get better clients. Um, but what you have to show at that point is some level of consumer trust. Your client needs to be able to trust that you can execute. If they're, if they're trusting you with a huge budget for a shoot, they need to know that you're going to be able to deliver. Um, and so you need to show, I want to see more client names, like labels. I want to know recognizable brands that you've worked for, agencies, um, but also get your business really dialed in at that point. You know, invest in someone to, to really lock down your branding. Um, make sure that every touch point that a client has with you is super professional, super dialed in, again, reflects your branding overall. I want to see 
like something recognizable in everything that you're doing so that I know that you're worth the investment. Otherwise, why would someone give you, you know, if, if they're, if someone's giving you like a few hundred thousand dollars for a shoot, you have to make them feel comfortable that you're going to execute, not that you're, you know, below the level that they're looking for. So that's kind of the time I think where you really need to look at your own business um, and just level up everything that you're doing. Mm. I agree with that. And I, I actually think I got the same question on my office hours last week. And I feel like the photographer was asking, how do I find brands that have money? So there's those sort of local brands that we know we can find locally. And there's those big brands that we all know about. Where do we find the in-between, the up and coming that might have a little more budget? So that just really, if that is what the question is, that just really requires some research. But some of my photographers will, which I think is so clever and may not be working at all right now, is they'll go to the trade shows for the industries that they want to be shooting for. So they'll go to like um, an active wear trade show or like the the snowboard trade show. And even though you're not going to be meeting the photo editors there, you are going to be meeting people at those companies. So go to the farmer's markets. If you're a food photographer, go to the culinary (laughs) events. If you're a food photographer, Um, ask yourself, where are those people hanging out? And then go find them. Even if it's not necessarily the art buyer or the photo editor, go to, yeah, go to the fashion trade show, go to the market, you know, Hmm. get clever. Because yeah. each company has a marketing team also. I mean, who do you think is the liaison between the company and the creative agency, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. ask them who is the creative person on in your company or whatever that we can, I can connect to. I think that's well, on really- LinkedIn, you can find that. You can find them on, yeah. The, sure. Another thing I do to answer this is I look at client lists on other photographers yeah. <laughs> so look at the competition. Who are they working for? Or who who right. is the kind of competition you want to have and who are their clients? Everyone lists clients. Or go to the magazine and see who's advertising in that magazine. So who's advertising in Vogue? Who's advertising in Food and Wine? Who's advertising in Snowboard Weekly? Yeah. 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 yeah, become involved in the industry that you're looking to shoot for. You know, like what you're saying, if you, let's just say if you want to shoot food, um, you know, subscribe to Bon Appetit, like figure out what people are doing, who are the up and coming chefs, brands, you know, creators in that world. And you can, and Google, you yeah. can Google the top restaurant companies or who are the food clients making this amount of money. It's yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, get involved, get it, you like get in with that industry and kind of become a part of that conversation so that you know who those people are and then you'll know who to reach out to. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to wait until like, you know, you see that someone just did a huge marketing overhaul and then you're like, now I should reach out. Like, no, you kind of missed it a little bit. (laughs) Like you want to be before that. You want to know what's happening next. Mm -hmm. I know we did get a question before and I'm going to start to speed myself up very rapidly now is um, how, how do you know when is the right time? When are companies spending the money? Is there a timing photographers can know about? I think now with social media, everyone's shooting all the time, but I think you have to think again about the industry that you're in. There are some industries that you know are always gonna need advertising for back to school. There are some industries that you know are always gonna need advertising for big Thanksgiving meal coming up or the holidays, yeah. Yeah, but when do they do that? Christmas, I'd say is normally June, July. Yeah. Yeah. Check out my marketing calendar for that information. They usually there's like a like an influx of work towards the end of the year because they're trying to spend mm-hmm. their budget. So yes, yeah. quarterly you know, like September, mm-hmm. September through November, you know, gear yourself up so that you're advertising in the beginning of September so you can get in on that gravy train, right? Yeah. Even earlier. Even okay, earlier. I'm gonna ask quick. Wait, we gotta wait. do our speed round, guys, right? It's 104. We must Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Ashley asks, is it okay to send occasional newsletters? with new work to creative directors, et cetera, I've worked with, or should I ask their permission? Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, if you've already worked with them. Send it, period. I just say send it. You don't need to ask permission. 
Yeah, if it's a one-on-one -on -one email, you actually, you you shouldn't worry about that. It's, um, no. And then if it's a newsletter, I mean, yeah, if you've worked with them before, then there's not really a problem. And again, if they if they don't want to receive it and they get a newsletter, they'll just unsubscribe. So yeah, they'll also lock out. Yeah. Okay. Next question. I think we so. answered this, but should 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 you keep emailing uh, editors, buyers, new work, even if they never reply? Rachel yes, asked that. One hundred percent, over yes. and over and over. Are DMs <laughs> on Instagram and LinkedIn a good casual way to message editors, clients? Mm -hmm. They can be. I don't think that's a short answer, though. That's a pretty long yeah. answer. True. Give a sentence each, please. Uh, I personally would not like to receive a, a DM. Um, and also it can get caught up if they, you know, depending on their account, they might not see it. Um, and it feels a bit too casual for an introduction. I think you should start with email. Yeah, formal. Mm. I'm more pushy. I like to, uh, and I talked about this on my Ask Stern Rep Wednesday Wisdom last week, is last week? This week. This week, yes. Yeah. Is to answer like a conversation if it's their Insta story. You reply, you comment on their Insta story. And then at the same time in their inbox, your Insta story is highlighted. So do that when you have an appropriate, mm -hmm. relatable Insta story you want them to see. Yeah, I recommend working your way up to the DM. So start with engagement, comment on their posts. So they start seeing and recognizing your name. Maybe see if they're engaging back with you. If they're engaging back with you, that might be more of an invitation to eventually casually go into their DMs and just say, hey, I love your post, but don't be salesy. Mm -hmm. um, We're dating. Yeah, yeah. We're dating. Yeah, it's like dating, like test yeah. the waters a little, you know, read the room, see, <laughs> are they into it, are they not, you know. Yeah, don't push. Although yes. I was once called pleasantly persistent, and I'll never forget. Love I was that. like, that is such a compliment. <laughs> uh, we have two questions. Okay, yes or no, fast. Uh, should I segment my email list based on client, i.e. food versus interiors? Yes. Yes, and target your imagery for that particular segment of the industry. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I say, I think yes, whenever you can, that's great. But also ask yourself, does segment, will segment A ever need images similar to segment B? Because I know when you sent us that question, Andrea, it was food and interiors. Those two go great together. So just ask yourself how different the segments are. Very yeah. good point. Yeah. And the last one, is a paid LinkedIn account necessary or worth the cost? I've yeah. never had a paid account. I have. I need it every day, every minute. Yep. Do you get What's email addresses from LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. What's I think it will respond to me if I send a note with their name. Mm -hmm. You have greater search capabilities also. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you guys have, do you guys think that's vital? I mean, Maybe. I like it. Um, okay. if, if you have another tool that you're using to connect with people um, or to get email addresses or to search, then you know, you would just have to weigh the cost of what that means to you. I find it worth every penny. I think it's great. So is it better to connect with them and engage with them through LinkedIn or through that professional page then than it is to be sending them as far as engagement is concerned, you know, mm. or is it? Here's my answer, Hugh. There is no answer. Because okay. one person is going to definitely respond this way or that way or a DM. Even the answers we're all giving here. Yeah, it's all arbitrary. But also you can pay attention to, are these people active on LinkedIn? Are they posting yeah. or does it look like uh, they haven't touched their page in 10 years? That will right. tell you whether or not it's worth engaging. They don't have a picture on LinkedIn. I kind of avoid them like they're not really. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really smart, Amy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Super all social. Yeah, no. no. So one thing that I just <laughs> even more than we should be asking about whether it's worth it to have the paid LinkedIn account is I can't tell you how many people I talk to who under their personal account it says like John Smith photography and then they never set up the company page and it drives me bananas. Like if you're trying to appear to be oh, yeah. a professional person in a professional social media world and you're trying to attract this higher level client, but you aren't taking your business seriously enough to have the company page on LinkedIn, that to me feels like a red flag. I agree. Like, I would look at, if I was a hiring person, I would look at that and be like, oh, why? Like, why didn't they just do this thing 
Like, are they not established as a business? Are they not at that level yet? Like, can I red flag. Yeah. So I would say even more than that, if you guys have not done it already, please go and set up your company. Okay. Page. You called me out, <laughs> Julie. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving. Now to go do that. See ya. Y'all have to do it. You have to, please. My last blog on my website is all about LinkedIn for photographers. So if you didn't get your answer here, you might get it there. It's also on my YouTube. Thank you. So much good stuff. Can you guys come back? Because we have about half of yeah. all my questions <laughs> and other people's questions. There's so Let's much to this topic. And, and we didn't even get to COVID times and how this is all different right now. Mm -hmm. We barely touched social media. Yeah. Oh I mean, that's like a whole other. That, well, that's that's going. Are you guys cool with that? I'm down. Can you join yeah, us next month? What does the yeah. audience think? Yeah. Are they tired yeah, of us? Well, <laughs> Look, we had 160 something participants. This is more. Yes, keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Yes. <laughs> awesome. More applause, more applause, please. Yeah. <laughs> for them, for them. yeah, I hear it. I see it. Can you stay today? All right. <laughs> we have more to do. We will keep doing this. We have to wrap this up. Stay tuned for our wrap up with just me and Hugh. We're going to talk about these two behind their backs. Oh, All I good. Know. Someone email me and tell me what they said. No, no. Uh, final, my personal final question, which I always like to ask one, is we are going through a major impactful time right now. Ugh. How does this personally frightening COVID time carry through into your work life? I think for me, it's really affected me as far as, like, I get really busy and I keep thinking, do I want to be this busy? How do I create a little more life into my work life for me I want to be able to take a walk I want to you know that's what I'm I'm really thinking about the quality of life a bit more hmm. well that's what that's what has brought to my attention is the quality of life through all of this and I make time for myself selfishly first thing in the morning that way I've taken care of myself then I can give myself to whoever else mm good scheduling it that's a good way yeah. to do it i think i think it's so important to allow ourselves to rest we're we're moving out of this hustle lifestyle it's important for us to allow ourselves to rest and to listen to our bodies and also something that is very important for me to convey about marketing is if you don't feel good while you're creating your marketing materials you're not sending positive energy to your clients. So if you hate being on Instagram, don't force yourself to post on Instagram. If you I hate agree. doing email, don't do it or find someone to help you with it. Um, pay attention to your energy. Yeah, and that also is gonna affect your immune system, right? We're in a pandemic. Listen to your body. I think if there's anything, any message that is paramount i think it was that message right there amy i think that really is about energy it's about yeah. your comfort level your feelings and, and being in touch with those yeah i think that's smart i actually will force myself to not force myself but i'll i'll have a dance party before i create an email blast I'll, i want to get in that positive energy so whatever makes you feel good do that first maybe it's going for a run maybe it's calling your girlfriend maybe it's eating chocolate Whatever makes you feel good, get in that good energy before you send that email. Before or you don't, don't send the email. Yeah, yeah. It probably will show. Yeah, yeah no, does. they'll feel it. They'll smell it. Yeah. Yeah, and getting all these emails like, well, 2020, boy, that was the year. Don't start your emails like that. Yeah. Don't start with that. Positive. Yeah. There shouldn't be any ne anything negative. Not even not even no as a word or don't yeah. as a word. Right. <laughs> Love that. Smart, Julie. Um, oh man. I mean, this is so funny that you said that to, to start us off, Andrea, because I feel like I've had this conversation with people the past few days that like we're all kind of indoors a lot more. We're doing a lot more planning and a lot more self-reflection. And I think that that is something that's come up with a lot of people is 
like, how can we take this to improve our, or the, how can we take this past year to improve our quality of life? And what is it that's really resonating with us as things that we want to lean more into things that we want to get away from, um, you know, and with marketing, as we're talking, it, people can smell your negativity. Like it will come through in every aspect of your business. If that's how you're feeling, um, you know, and at the end of the day, you don't get a prize, like at the end of your life for having worked really hard and been miserable, you know, but no one's going to like give you an award for that. So I think this is the time that we all can focus a little bit more on our self-care, um, you know, on pacing ourselves and creating that sort of consistent business where we are doing the things that we can, we're doing the things that we love and we're not getting run down with, you know, the, the day to day. And that energy could open up the, the ideas and the creativity, the juices to, to test more and to expand yes. and grow and become so much better. And I want to talk a little bit about testing too. You know, I, from my experience, every time I've tried to do a test to get a client or, or, or a particular market, it never has worked for me. When I do a personal shoot on my heart's desire, my inspiration that matches with my sen sensibilities, those are the ones that turn out really well. And when I do those projects, no matter, they may not even be marketable. They may not even work in any segment, but the energy that I feel in creating that work, when I deliver it, you know, when I show it to an art director, we talked about this last time, is that they're gonna pick up on that energy. And they're going to pick up on it in the words that I use when I show it to them or, you know, or send them an email. So I think it's really, really important to be doing work that you that comes from here, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know. That's my yeah. thing. It's contagious. It is. Yeah. yeah. It is. And that's not to shame anyone who's having a really hard time right now. Be compassionate with yourself. Allow yourself to take a break and do something for yourself so you can get into the right head space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God bless it. Next week on therapy <laughs> with uh, <laughs> It is, it's a little bit like that. But, yeah. but we all need it right now. And the closer we are, we still need to get work in this together. Yeah, well, talk to other people, do your marketing with other people. Don't, don't, it's, you don't have to live in a bubble. Get a friend. Or put together a mastermind group, you know? Yeah. Love there's that. the group there's a group called art of freelance and yeah. patty, awesome patty if you could put that up too art of freelance is a great group a yeah group. i've done it people together it's we're stronger there's yeah. so much going on right now on clubhouse too with photographers supporting each other and sharing their information and advice it's such a positive place so club far house. from what i've discovered yeah patty if you could put that up too clubhouse it's a it's a good one just starting out did a yeah. whole list of them. Um, we'll talk about that next time. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. On part <laughs> seven. <laughs> well, Amy and Julie and Hugh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I yes. of course never can do this without you, Hugh. So and you guys on these, it's been have you next, next fall. Thank you so much for having us. And as, again, if you if we didn't answer any questions. You can find Julie and I on social media, on our websites. We would love to help you all. And join the APA mailing list so you won't miss out on any of their, on our upcoming episodes and a lot of other stuff that they offer. Okay. So and then stay with us for our wrap chat. But Hugh, you want to say something? I would just want to say thank you, ladies, so much. Um, thank you to our sponsor, Sammy's Camera, and to Patty Silverstein behind the scenes, who... Can, this cannot happen without her, all right? Mm -hmm. Love you, love you, love you, love you. And we'll see Amy and Julie next month, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm in. yes. yes. Thank you, thank you, Patty. Thank you, APA LA. Yeah, thanks guys, this was great as always. All right, you two, get out of here so we can talk about you. <laughs> be nice. Right. Bye. Good night. It'll be Bye. nice. Oh, Hugh, that was so good, huh? Yeah, really, really good. So good. Um, I, go ahead, ask. No, you go ahead. I'm, I'm still well, a bit speechless. Well, I'm just, you know, it's really interesting to hear, you know, like this, this question from someone about, you know, do I send a video introduction? I'm like, that's brilliant. Let's see if we can make, if you can make that happen. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, understanding how video works and to make it, you know, get some opinions on how it to be something that is intriguing for your audience to see. But if you work in video and yeah. you've got a good but way who, of doing it. Nowadays, who doesn't work in video? It's yeah. like that other question that came up about, how, oh, about cutting edge and staying yeah. fresh ahead yeah. of the trends because that's the yeah. business we're in. Cl clients hire us so they can stay ahead of the trends. They want to know what's next. Right. So they need to see that in our work. Yeah, and I think behind, what I get is a lot of behind the scenes. You know, people are asking me, how do you do things? How do you, you know, do things? And I, and I do these behind the scenes videos that show my process, let's say. And I think that would be very interesting. So if you've got a special technique or, you know, a, a particular personal shoot, you know, has a very interesting way you've done it to document that and, and share. video now is the same thing stills yeah. and video it's they're together so yeah. it's not just if you do video yes in fact most of my you know ad jobs i think probably all of them now are you ask for a video element you know right. one way to perform or animation or whatever it may be yeah that topic yeah. of marketing is it's it's like a bear because there's so much to it what are the top well, you know, it's hard to break it out. So I was so happy to have two of them and they seem to have different perspectives, which I, I like. Do. Yeah. And even yeah. though they do the same thing, they have a different way and they, uh, to use that word energy, they have a different energy. So yeah. for people looking for a consultant, I guess here's a question to you, who, how, do you how do you as a photographer, who would, how would you make the decision who to choose as a cons consultant? Well, I think it's as much the same as finding an agent. You know, it is a commitment, you know, especially with an agent, it's a commitment, it's a relationship. You know, I think do your homework, you know, look at their websites, but also see if you can get some of her, their past uh, clients to talk to and find out, do a little research on that. But I also think it is an energy thing too, between the two, you know, so you not only you're interviewing them when it comes time to that phone call or that Zoom meeting with them individually. How does it feel? You know, are they trying to sell you too hard? You know, or is it a soft sell? You know, what what resonates with you as you're talking to them? So, check, you know, connect to your feelings about them. If you feel really good, then you want to take it to the next step, perhaps. I don't know. And even take it further and be honest. Be really honest with them. Oh, completely. Like, I'm not sensing that you're into... Instagram as much. And I, that's what I need. Is that true? You know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Let them know yeah. what you need. You're and because be there's, there are more consultants, not just these two. That's true. Search around shop. Yeah. And if you're spending that, that chunk of money to, you know, make sure it's the right person. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh, marketing. We have so much more to, to talk about people. If you're still there, give us your questions. Well, what, what if, let me, let's see what we did not hit. And then we can talk about, you know, what other areas did we not get to on this particular webinar that we can prepare for next time? Well, we have resources, database, mm -hmm. networking, mm -hmm. COVID times. Yeah. We barely got into social media. Yeah. We have so much, but any other topics, if you all have interests, we want to know. All right. And, and the other thing which I wanted to, um, which I was uh, asked to actually talk about is uh, hire a pro on APA also, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, let me see, where did it? I can say me... about it. it's on the APA national page. Yes. And it's a great resource. Well, we didn't cover resources, so that will be next month. But an APA has a resource for clients to look up. How do I find a, someone in Minneapolis? Right. Get yourself on there. Yes. And I think getting yourself in front, I mean, you don't have to subscribe all the time. Like, like commune, you, you can, you can join them without, you know, monthly fee or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, it's restricted benefits, but, you know, just getting your work, your work in, into that database or on that website is Why not? another source, you know? So. Yeah. Uh, APA. Join APA. You have to, to be, yes, you have to be an A, yeah, that's right. You have to be an APA member 
to get on to that uh, Hire Pro, okay? So okay. thanks for pointing that out, Patty. See, she's right there. She's right there, that Patty. Right Everyone's right a Patty. <laughs> Is well, there a cue, is there a topic of marketing that you've always felt confused by or like how do people do that? There is, you know, it's just there's so much to it that I think for me what and it's taken me years to actually hone it down and I do not do it perfectly at all. I'm not that consistent. That is the one area that I really need to be focusing on. Um but I just think it's trial. I mean, it really is trial and error, you know, find what works. It's going to take some experiment, experimentation and whatnot. Um, but check in with yourself as far as, you know, should I comment on that? E should I ask for work in that email, you know, or, you know, just, I think by experience, by experiencing it, by trying it, you will come to a recipe that works for you. But I think there's just so many ways to doing it. And it uh, constantly changes. I do think Insta stories, I'm a pusher. It's so important. Use what you, you got. Are you talking about like on Instagram? Yeah, Instagram stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Different than the feed. And we didn't even get into that. It's a whole big topic. Okay. How to approach feed versus Insta stories. All right. Well, I'm, I'm interested in finding out more about that. All right. That's your teaser for next time, next month. Yep. 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 All right. Well, all right. Well, we'll see you uh, next month. Next month. With Amy and Julie. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Andrea. All right. Thank you. Be safe. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> we'll talk to us. Bye.